Welcome, writers, readers, and friends to the Authors Talking Bookish podcast. I'm Donna Norman Carbone, author of All That Is Sacred. And I'm Hope Gibbs, author of Where the Grass Grows Blue. We're two debut writers traditionally published by a small publishing house, bringing to you all the experiences that we as authors learn the hard way, so you don't have to. We'll give you insights from the inception of a book idea to publication and beyond. And along the way, we'll share our love of books from the writer's perspective. Hi, friends. Welcome back. Um, Welcome to our 10th episode, Writer's Block, Is It Real? My name is Donna Norman Carbone, and I am joined by Hope Gibbs. Hi, Hope. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am very well. Can you believe? Okay, so this is our 10th one, and it's also our... I like to say my Halloween because I'm, I'm wearing my Halloween sweater and I have my mums and, and pumpkins back there. But uh, I can't believe we've, we've made it to 10 episodes. I know. I know. This is exciting. We're, we're moving on to about six, almost six months of doing this. Oh, wow. So before we get started, because I'm going to ask you about, you know, what you're reading and what's going on. Mm-hmm. I have to say a big congratulations to my co-host because something big happened to her because she was named the 2023 American Fiction Award winner for inspirational fiction. And I am so excited for you, Donna. It is well-deserved. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was fun getting that little piece of mail. And you won an award as well. You're racking up the awards, actually. No, not like you, but I'm I'm just so excited for you because it's so well-deserved. And when you're a debut novelist to get any kind of recognition, you are just, it's, it's thrilling. So I am so happy for you. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I would like to add that both of us are finalists for the Book Fest Awards, which yeah. are coming up. Yeah. So we've yeah. lots of things going on. So what's going on with you? What, how are you doing book clubs? Are well, you doing events? All, this is a totally new setting for me because We are redoing the office that I had before that I just shared on our Instagram post. My daughter is an interior designer and she came up with the idea that I needed floor to ceiling bookshelves in my office. And of course, I am not going to um, argue with that. And so um, my husband just decided to jump on board and started tearing apart my office. So I'm, I'm actually going to redo my graffiti wall on the other side of the room. So I'm going to be here um, for a little while. This is a very cramped room, even though you can't see it on air. Um, I feel like I'm totally closed in here. It's a good thing I'm not claustrophobic. Well, I can't wait to see the end results. And my daughter is not an interior decorator, so I guess I'm going to have to stay in my office. <laughs> So what are you reading, Hope? What's going on? Well, so this month, because, you know, you know, I host something for Bookish Road Trip. It's Author Mm -hmm. Take the Wheel. And so this month, our book was House of Mirrors, which is perfect for the Halloween theme. Um, Mm -hmm. It's by Nola Nash, and it's part paranormal, part Mm -hmm. historical fiction, part women's fiction. And I just absolutely loved it. It It also takes place in this town called Franklin, Tennessee, which I live about six miles from. And I've been there, you know, hundreds of times. So that was that was my October early read. I've I've always read several books at a time, but that that was my favorite read of the month. Oh, that's awesome. So now when you go back there, are you going to go back there with kind of a new point of view? So the funny thing is she and I met back in the spring and she took me around because she also does ghost tours because yeah. there's a lot of history in Franklin, Tennessee. If you don't know, there was a, a really huge civil battle, a civil war battle. And a lot of people think that there are hauntings in this town. And she took me around and there's a couple of places now I'm not sure I want to go by again, but uh, she's <laughs> fascinating. I love it. And when you get to Nashville, I will take you to Franklin. Yeah, I would love that. I actually tuned into your author, Take the Wheel with Nola, and I think she's fascinating. If I ever get there, I want her to guide me around. I love all of all things metaphysical. Well, you would love this, and, and we'll do a ghost tour when you come down. Yeah, yeah, I would love that. So what about you? What are you reading? So I just finished reading Denzi Webb's um, When Robins Appear, and I loved it. It was so good. Have you read that one? 
I read that last year and let me tell you, it is a, it is a gut wrenching. It's, it's a tearjerker. I, yeah. I was not expecting some of the twists and turns in that book. And actually she is going to be in bookish road trip author, take the wheel in 2024 for her okay. new book. I think it's called breathing in reverse. It so is. That's our- and I just ordered that because I loved when Robins appear so much. So yeah. I can't wait to dive into that one. Okay. Well, yeah. why don't we get to our episode here? Sure. So today we're talking about something that I think personally is real. It is called yeah. writer's block. And most writers have probably had maybe a little bit of it, or some people can even be paralyzed from it. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm kind of struggling with my own writer's block. And so here today, we're going to talk about ways that you can probably help yourself get through it, or maybe I can help myself get through this. Uh, so let's just dig in. So Donna, what do you think are some of the main symptoms of, of writer's block? Well, um, I found this article, which I, I attached to the show notes, and I just want to um, kind of sum it up for you because I thought that this was interesting. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, just going to read a little bit. According to the New York Times article, How to Beat Writer's Block by Maria Konnikova, psychologists deem it a real phenomenon. The term was introduced in the 1940s by a psychiatrist named Ed Edmund Burkler, who claims writers are blocked psychologically and need therapy to become unblocked. I thought that was interesting. Um, In the 1970s, two Yale professors, Jerome Singer and Michael Berrios, did a study that showed anxiety, depression, perfectionism, OCD, and self-doubt were the result of blocks to writing. What do you think about that? Well, I'm not sure about the therapy. I don't know if if I can, you know, go to a therapist every time I get blocked, yeah. but it's true. I mean, there is something real, at least for me, I, and there, but there's also different reasons for writing blocks, so writer's block. So it can be self-doubt. I really think that that is a huge component because I don't care who you are. I think that when you 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 pour your heart onto the page and you know mm-hmm. that People are not just going to read it. Let's be honest. They're going to judge it. They're going to criticize it, or they may love it. That leaves you very vulnerable. Um, And as therapeutic as writing can be, because it has been very therapeutic for me, there is that anxiety of, oh, no, what is someone going to think about this sentence, this line, this storyline? So what do you think, Donna? Well, you know what? Um, I agree. I think that... um, before, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Um, I used to be the kind of writer that would write something and I would edit it to death before I would move on. Like I was that perfectionist writer. And I think that, I don't know, maybe being an English teacher might go hand in hand with that. Um, but I, and so it, kept me stuck. And I had a hard time moving on because I would always read from the beginning to where I felt like it was edited, right? And then go back to the beginning and read through it. And I've totally changed my writing process since then, because I do think that that really led to writer's block for me. And I don't encounter it so much anymore other than just not having the time or not making the time. Um, I think when I do make the time and, you know, you put a chunk aside, I can get into the story pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that, that I do the same thing when I'm writing, I go over the paragraph. I, I edit, I edit instead of Mm -hmm. making more of a, just a constant, you know, stream, just let yourself go. And I'm trying to be more like that kind of writer, but especially with my first book and even most of my second book, I wouldn't go to the next chapter until the previous chapter was perfected or as much as Mm -hmm. I could make it. I would even, I even have a, there's some apps that you can use that can check your grammar. Cause unlike you, I am not an English teacher just to make sure that, you know, things are, are right. But I, there's something about me that I just couldn't go on knowing that the past was still, you know, not perfected and, and, and put in a nice little bow. So I do think that what you're doing is smart because it does help creativity. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, it's very liberating and it was hard to learn how to do that just to kind of write through the, um, 
just the, I don't know, the muddy parts, Yeah, you know, and even, um, even kind of give yourself the grace that not your whole draft is not going to be perfect. Um, and I think knowing that and having someone say that to me was also very liberating. Um, because I, you know, I think we write in isolation and we don't know what other writers are experiencing. So I think that's part of it too, is, you know, having other writers in your community to talk about things like this. Well, with my first book, and I've, I've said this before on the show, I was in a very kind of unique bubble. No one knew I was writing. I did not have writer friends, so to speak. I didn't have a critique partner. Um, so when I got blocked, I had other ways of dealing with it. I think my writer's block now is more on me for time management because right. I'm writing everything else other than creative writing. I'm writing a blog and a blog is creative. Don't get me wrong, right. but I'm writing a blog post, which is more realistic. It's, it's what's going on in my life. I'm doing mm -hmm. Instagram posts. I'm writing to other authors for author, take the wheel. I'm writing to book festivals. I mean, so my, my writing, I'm writing like crazy, but it's, I'm kind of losing that creative point of writing. Yeah. Yeah. I allow myself to get distracted by the things that I have to do. And I kind of have this running to do list. And I feel like I can't get into the creative zone until I check all those things off. Yeah. I Every had a once in a while, I'll create a schedule for myself and I'll say, okay, I'm only going to do those that my to do list two or three days a week. And then I'm going to set writing time aside. So that helps. Well, I'm hoping to make a change because again, there there's time in the day. I just have to carve it out, but it's almost like a muscle. If you, you know, you stop using it, it, it takes a while to get the strength back. And I have, I have been on the last chapter of my book for months and yeah. it's just sitting there and sitting there and I'm mapping out the other two books because I'm so excited about it, but I've just got to sit down start again. And again, it's, it's not a, it's not a race. It's not a sprint. It is a marathon. So, yeah. um, so let's talk about how you can recognize if you are experiencing writer's block, you may not actually say, Oh, I have writer's block. So yeah. some of the things that I think for me is maybe a little bit unmotivated. Do you ever have that when you experience some writing? Um, I, I am always motivated to write. But sometimes, all, like like we've been talking about, all the other things kind of come in and distract me from that. Like, I always want to carve time out for writing. I just, sometimes I just don't do it because I have so many other things going on. Yeah. And then there's also, I mean, you can feel, just staring at your blank screen. Yeah. That is, to me, when I just see the uh, the prompt, just, it's just like, torturing me. It's taunting me. Like, are you going to write something that's yeah. intimidating when you're, when you're looking at a blank screen, do you ever have that as well? I, I do, but I have a really good fix for that. Okay, please. That I live by. I never end a writing session at the end of a scene or at the end of a chapter. I always end it right in the middle of something that I'm excited to get back to. Because here's what that does, like psychologically, that kind of plays into, you know, the New York Times article that I talked about. Um, but when you sit down and you know exactly where the scene's going, mm -hmm. you just can't wait to get it. Like you need to get it all out on the paper. And once you do that, you're automatically in the rhythm of writing and creating. And so mm -hmm. I think that that just helps you kind of hit the ground running. Okay. I'm actually going to try that because yeah. again, it, it's also the carving out the time you have to carve out the time because there's always something to distract you. I mean, yeah. for me, I have a tennis match. Oh, I can't possibly write today. Or, you know, a couple of weeks ago I was entertaining 11 fraternity boys from my son's school and at Georgia, mm -hmm. there's always something that's going to come up. So you really, as a writer, if you want to be a professional writer, you're going to have to sacrifice something in your life to make time for your craft. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about, um, and, and another thing that people have writer's block is lack of ideas. Now I feel mm -hmm. like I have a million ideas. Mm -hmm. I just can't get them all down on page. What about you? 
Yeah, I feel the same way. I have on occasion have gotten stuck in more the revision process mm -hmm. than the write, the actual writing process um, where I feel like I don't, if I have a problem, sometimes I can't get to the solution. And for me, talking through that problem with other writers and brainstorming has been so valuable yeah. to kind of help me get back into it and, and move forward. So let's start talking. We, we've identified the problem. I don't think we yeah. need to keep going over this. Let's talk about ways that can help you with writer's block. And for me, one of the ways that I worked through things when I was writing my first book and even into my second book is exercise. Yeah. And I know that not everyone is going to want to go out and run 10 miles or, you know, be an hour and a half on an elliptical but there is a study from Stanford University that says just a simple walk outside can produce can um, can ri raise your level of creativity by 60 percent. Mm. Just going out and experiencing nature or wherever you are, just walking away and, and letting your heart, you know, start mm -hmm. pumping than just sitting. And so if you're blocked, don't just sit there at the desk. Maybe go take a walk around your neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Even just go outside. I, I find that I do that a lot. I take a lot of writing breaks when I'm writing because I find that when I walk away, I give myself time and space to think. And sometimes I come up with some solutions to some of those problems that present themselves. And also just, you know, like I said, like you said, taking a break, but it could be just to go get a cup of coffee, something yeah. that brings you joy that will, you know, kind of get the endorphins going to make you, you know, a little bit more creative and also a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is too, I think that goes hand in hand with that is writing in a different locale. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're, if you're constantly writing in one space and you're finding that you're blocked somehow, take your laptop, go to a coffee shop, go to a park. Um, sometimes that will help uh, fuel your creative juices. Yeah. Uh, when I, we were talking about Nola Nash, the, mm -hmm. the author who I interviewed this past month, she wrote her book almost entirely in one coffee shop in Franklin, Tennessee. And she told me that there are studies that say that writing in a coffee shop will actually help you be more productive. And mm -hmm. it's it's the, the, the crowd, the people coming in and out, the sounds. And she said that it really did help her. And she wrote her book in six months. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So, or, or another thing that you could do is another thing that brings you joy, go out with friends, try mm -hmm. to, you know, be with other people. Sometimes being a writer is a very lonely, it's a very mm -hmm. lonely job sometimes. And, and writers need to, to experience some joy too, and get out there with friends. What do you think about that? Have you ever done that? Um, yeah, I mean, I do, I not in the middle of a writing session when I'm writing, I don't call up my friends and I'm like, Hey, let's go get a cup of coffee. But yeah. I do think giving yourself a break and, and sort of, we've talked about this before, kind of the work, let work life balance, yeah. right? Um, you can't just work, 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 because I do think that it, it, it just kind of sucks the energy out of you, which isn't helpful for, for the creative flow either. So I do think you need to get out and, you know, have some me time. And I think a long time ago, I remember that you suggested, I think this was on your Instagram account, or you may have blogged about it, mm -hmm. about just writing for, I think you said five minutes without stopping. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't look back. Don't try to, to edit yourself. Just, I think it's what you said. It's like a kind of a flow of, of it's a word sprint. Yes. And yeah. so something like I do those that. with my kids, with my students sometimes. Um, and I, I actually got that idea from a program called NaNoWriMo, which I want to talk a little bit about. Um, I started NaNoWriMo in 2012. Um, I was turned on to it by a colleague. And basically NaNoWriMo is a not-for-profit organization. And um, they started off by just flagging the month of November to um, write 50,000 words. And now they've expanded into April. And um, they also have kind of morphed the NaNoWriMo National Novel Writing Month with NaNoWriMo National Novel Revision Month. 
So there are some people who aren't in the writing phase that take the month of November to revise, which is something that I do. Um, and I have written several of my drafts through NaNoWriMo. NaNoWriMo was actually um, the program that I used to kind of train me to write through a draft, to write through, you know, what wasn't working, what was muddy waters. Um, and then to go back after that first draft is complete and kind of pick out what is working and mm -hmm. reshape the story a little bit. Well, I definitely think I'm going to try. I, I tried it last year, but we had a lot of things happen in November. But again, yeah, I it's a commitment and I do like it because they do keep they kind of hold you accountable and you can get badges and it, it's, yeah, it's definitely fun. a community effort. It's a community and you you kind of get it's, it's also kind of competitive, which I kind of like, too. Yeah, it is competitive. And you know what I love? They have this little bar graph on their website. And so you you enter your word count every day and you kind of get to see the bar go up, 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 up. And then if you don't write, it gets static for a little bit. Um, one of my hints is to early on write over your minimum word count for the day and try to bank some words because there's going to come a day where something comes up and you can't write and you don't want to get yourself discouraged. So if you bank some words early on, then you won't feel like you're falling behind. Well, I love that idea. And I think that that's something maybe we should do a, an episode just specifically on that because I'm going to do it. I'm, I promised I was yeah. going to do it again this year. So uh, we're running out of time. And of course, okay. I always love to say it. You're our teacher. So could you give us our homework? Yeah. So um, on our show notes, we have a list of some tips. We mentioned a few of them, but there are some that we didn't even hit on. Um, so please check out our, our show notes. And I would make a list of the things on the show notes, the tips that we've either mentioned here or um, that are on that document that resonate with you. Things that you feel like, oh, I could do that. As Hope mentioned, you might not have time to run an elliptical for an hour and a half, but you could go take a walk around your block. Write those things down. So when you encounter writer's block, you can go back to that list and you could say, oh, OK, I'm going to do this. And it's all ready for you. So you're not, you know, getting stressed out in the moment. Well, I'm inspired after our conversation. I'm going to push through. I I actually think mine is a little bit, um, I kind of did it to myself. It's just, it's more not writer's block. It's not carving out the time. So yeah. I'm going to get inspired and I'm going to, to hit it again. Um, but we've got a new episode coming up. Our next episode is going to be of all about reviews. Yeah. And as Donna and I know, as first time, you know, debut novelist, reviews are so important. And we're going to talk about all the ways to get reviews and how they can affect your sales. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about that because we are in the throes of that stage right now. We are. May well, I again, Donna, it was wonderful to spend some time with you and until next time. Okay. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Hope Gibbs. And I'm Donna Norman Carbone. It's time for you to get to work. We look forward to seeing you in two weeks with another tip from your author friends.